Some autistic people experience shutdown or meltdown. Meltdown to the outside observer can look similar to a tantrum. It's outwardly very expressive and it indicates high distress. The difference between a meltdown and a tantrum is that a tantrum has a goal, that of getting one's own way, and a tantrum would stop if that goal was reached. It is, however out of control it looks, still in some way decided upon as an act. A meltdown happens to a person. They cannot control it, they cannot stop it. They might be able to hold it off for a while, like a person leaning on a door to try and stop somebody from getting in, but ultimately they don't have control. In my last film, I spoke about people who express emotional distress outwardly and people who might have that distress expressed inwardly and it be hidden. And I think there's a parallel here between shutdown and meltdown in that the shutdown experience of being overwhelmed by emotion is one of that inward expression in the way that meltdown is an outward expression. Your emotional <sighs> overload forms inwards and to the observer it looks as if somebody has sort of switched off, gone vacant. There's an analogy that's often drawn with a bottle of fizzy pop um, to help people understand why meltdowns and shutdowns can seemingly happen for no reason. Such a dangerous thing to even consider. Of course there's a reason. Um, the analogy describes how difficulties faced by people are akin to having that fizzy bottle, um, fizzy drink shaken up and that at some point the pressure in the bottle becomes so much that it all explodes out all over the place. It's a good analogy. It leads me to what I want to think about next. I said in my last film that there are people who express their distress outwardly and those who express it inwardly and they're equally deserving of support. But that tends to be that the first group get our attention as they create the disturbance and create problems for others, whereas the latter group create problems for themselves alone. And I promise that in this film I would talk about a group that feel, falls in between the two, yeah? Um, that Coke bottle, the shaken bottle of fizzy drink, when does it all spray out everywhere? It's when you take, it's that first twist, isn't it? When you first twist the lid. And my first two films were sparked by a tweet and the next one was sparked by something a parent said. This film is something that I have heard over and over again. Um, the child goes to school, they behave impeccably at school, and then they're dreadful at home. One lovely little girl I used to know used to lose it as she turned the corner on the road from the street, on, uh, from her school on the walk on the way home. And another was like, perfect in class, but would hurt her little brother when she got home and claw at her mother's face. And the inexperienced school looks at that and says the behaviour is good at school, therefore school is doing the right thing. And the behaviour is bad at home, therefore parents are doing the wrong thing. And the, there might be situations where that description applies. But the key thing here is to recognise the significance of an autism diagnosis. The experienced school hears that the child is melting down on the way home and recognises that aspects of the school day must be contributing to shaking up that metaphorical bottle of fizzy pop and they respond immediately, doing detective work to find out what at school is causing that build-up of pressure that's being released at home. Here's, here's a good audit to do in your response to behaviour of neurodivergent children. Ask yourself whether it's the same response that you would give to the same behaviour from a neurotypical child. Because if it is, then you could well be treating autism as a behaviour difference, not a brain difference. And when you do that, you put the child at risk of further difficulties and you risk doing harm, which of course nobody wants. Let's think about the bottle again. If you wanted to open that bottle that's been all shook up, what would you do? You'd like, let it out bit by bit, wouldn't you? Like a little shh, and then a pause, and a shh. And so we can think about how we might put those little releases into the school day for children. Is there an opportunity for them to 
um, let, off, let off a bit of steam is the phrase, isn't it? You might find time outside, time moving about, uh, time with sensory resources, time alone, um, time engaged with a favourite activity all serve this purpose. But, but if I gave you a bottle of fizzy drink, you wouldn't be thinking, oh, I hope she's let the fizz out of this one really slowly over time. You'd want it never to have been shaken up in the first place. <laughs> and that should be our aim. How do we go about achieving that? And how we do that is tied up with ensuring that we don't make the mistake of viewing autism as a behaviour, not a brain difference. And in my next film, I'm going to take you through a whistle-stop tour of some of those brain differences that I'm referring to. And that will hopefully help us to understand what is shaking that bottle up and how we might prevent it.